In a previous video, we created a try, catch, and finally block where we validate data, and if the user chooses to opt out of the program, we'll throw an exception, which will bubble the control of the program up from this method prompt for integer method that calls. In this video, we're going to see how we can create our own exception classes. If you see here on line 166, I simply said throw new exception, which is a generic exception. Now an exception is a class, and it has a class hierarchy just like any other class. I can use the exception that comes out of the box with Java, or I can create my own. And the reason why I might want to create my own is I have an option for multiple catch blocks that follow a try block. The only thing is these catch blocks have to catch different types of exceptions. So by creating my own exception, I can define my own flow through a try and catch sequence. So first of all, let me go to vehicles and I'm going to choose new Java class and I'm going to call this class name, we'll call it vehicle exception. Okay. And uh, everything looks good here. So I'm going to choose finish. Now we still want to get everything that we get out of a normal exception. In other words, we want our vehicle exception to be a special type of exception. We have to set up a relationship between vehicle exception and the class called exception that we saw earlier, this one called exception E right here. So to do that, I simply, where my cursor is right now, I say extends exception, like so, and then I can save. I can do any kind of extra logic in here that I want, as I could with any class. I could make attributes and methods. I could make new constructors. There's quite a bit that I can do, or I can just leave it as it is. So if I go back to driver now, what I can do is I can scroll down to uh, where I'm throwing this exception, and instead of saying throw new exception, I can say throw new vehicle exception. Now it's going to redline because it doesn't understand this constructor. Uh, so um, you might remember a while ago we talked about overloaded constructors and the default constructor. What I can do for that is I can go back to this vehicle's exception class and I can make an, a constructor for it. Public vehicle exception. We know a constructor will typically have the same name as the class it's in. It doesn't require a return type. And most of the time it will be public. There are exceptions, but most of the time it will be public. String message, super message. I know we haven't talked about super before, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking whatever string is passed into this class and we're passing it up to this exception, this exception where we're borrowing some logic that already exists. And I save. Back to driver, and you see the red line goes away. Now, the program will continue to run because a vehicle exception is an exception. So what will continue to run is we have it here. But we have another choice as well. We could do like so. We can add another catch block. Catch vehicle exception E. Open curly, close curly. Now this catch block will be specific if we have a vehicle exception. And the catch block below will be will catch anything that is not a vehicle exception. So you see this acts as a filter in a way. It will filter out any vehicle exception and handle it here. Anything that's not a vehicle exception is going to fall down to the more generic exception and will be handled here. So unable to acquire valid data, that might be good for vehicle exception. But for general exception, we might just say unknown error, program terminating. Now that's probably not something that you want to really show a user. You don't know what the error is, but you get the idea. Put in some generic error message that says, you know, program's not operating properly, we're shutting down, something like that. So I can take this and I will copy and paste it down here, the other place where I have a similar try catch. Okay. And now I'm going to save, and what we're going to see is when I force this exception to be thrown down in the validation method, when I force the exception to be thrown by saying I no longer want to keep entering data, it's going to come up here and it will only run one catch block. It's kind of like an else if, only one will run. The one that's most specific to the exception that we're throwing 
is the one that's going to run, and that's this guy right here. So we'll see unable to acquire valid data, but we will not see the more generic unknown error because our exception was filtered out by this first block and therefore, therefore will not reach the second. Let's go ahead and run and see what we get. Okay, so I enter some valid data for the first one. For the next one, I enter invalid data and I say, no, I do not want to try again. Okay, unable to acquire valid data program terminating. So you see that specific message, unable to acquire valid data program terminating. I choose OK, and the program's all done. And you see that it did not run the second catch block with a more generic unknown error. It only ran this catch block with an error that was specific to the exception that we made up ourselves. So this is a video in making custom exceptions and having multiple catch blocks. This is part of a video series that I'll have down in the comments section of this video if you'd like to watch it from beginning to end. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you.